I love hearing memoir. Memoir is the best. I read memoir all the time. I write memoir um, in my blog. I do a blog called Mert Roddy and a bunch of other authors too, and I do a lot of memoir in that. Uh, and my work is, uh, is you know, we write what we know, right? Um, some of the best stuff is, is we have to experience. I do a lot of, a uh, ton of research for my, for my work. I mean, I'll spend six months, eight months, a year doing research. Uh, and, and my other author buddies will say, Steve, you know, you got to write your, your piece sometime. You know, get out of the research and, and, and get to the page. Uh, and I didn't really feel comfortable writing until I really, really know something. Until I felt it and experienced it and done it and talked to all the professionals in the field. And, you know, it's just, uh, I, I, you know, if you're the author, you're, you are the authority, authority of the work. So people are going to expect to be able to read something that rings true. And I can't stand when I read fiction that doesn't ring true. So my fiction is really dosed with a lot of reality, a lot of personal experience. And Boulevard came about as my own catharsis to uh, sexual addiction that I had for many, many years. Um, and it was my first novel that sold right after I wrote it. Uh, but that really comes from having experience and time in the film business. But um, you know, when you put that kind of energy and time into something over and over again, and you, and you see yourself pull away from your family in the process, uh, you, you love it and you hate it. And, and at this moment, I, I, I'm kind of resenting it, and I'm spending a lot more time with my wife and kids than, than I should be, you know, as far as being a professional writer. But it's all right. It happens when it happens, and, and the work is better for it when, when you do it when you love it. So it's an experience, it's something that grows. You, you'll get better with it as you get older. That's something where we're not sports stars, we can get better as we age. <laughs> so here's an excerpt from um, Boulevard. Now this is a character named Hayden Glass. He's a robbery homicide detective who is struggling and hiding a sex addiction. The only, the only people who know about his sex addiction are the brothers that he has in his SAA, Sex Addicts Anonymous meetings. These are the people that he shares uh, his experiences with. Um, the story is that uh, he, he encounters a killer uh, and in and, and murder scene, and then he comes another murder scene a little time later, and then a third, and he starts to, dis to feel that they're connected in one way or another, even though the MOs are very different. Uh, throughout the book, he, dis he discovers that they are connected, and they're connected to him, and someone's in his meetings listening to him, and they know him, and they know his secrets, and he has to make a decision whether to, to expose himself as a sex addict to his, his lieutenant, his captain, or to keep that quiet and continue to pursue the, the killer. Because uh, he knows if he reveals it, he'll be taken off the case. Uh, and he's the best guy to really get this killer. But by, by staying the course and trying to get the killer and keeping it secret, people are getting hurt in the meantime. So this is a terrible moral situation he's in throughout the novel. But this is, this is from the beginning. This is kind of a sense of his world that we get uh, right off the top. So I'll cut into a little bit here. <clears throat> Where's that water? It didn't bring the water. Oh, here. here. Yeah, I had a glass. It's right behind Rachel, actually. This one? Yep. Okay. Do you mind? No. Thank you. Oh, now you're going to knock over a chair. <laughs> That's great. Great. <laughs> all right. Hayden saw cruisers all around. Men driving alone, peering into the shadows, eyes straining, riding the brakes, weaving through traffic, not drunk, but intoxicated by a rush of dopamine pumping. They drove Range Rovers, Mercedes, Hummers, Jags, Volkswagens, looking like anyone anywhere. Bankers, studio execs, mid-level sales managers, school teachers, pastors. Monday morning, they would likely sit at their jobs in a daze, nursing the numb feeling that they had done something secret, something shameful, something wrong. Some would wake up in county jail with their lives unraveling, contemplating suicide. Tonight, they drove without thought of consequence. Most didn't know what to call it. It was just something they did, a secret they kept from the rest of the world, a secret kept from themselves even, as they avoided their reflections in the mirror of the bathroom at Carl's Jr., where they would stop to wash the grime of strangers from their hands and coughs, panicking over drops of semen that stained silk shirts, running alibis through their heads to justify three hours lost in the night. They drove on autopilot, expressions fixed, empty, without compassion, as they crisscrossed the same two-mile stretch of sunset, looking for a hit. It was Saturday, vice night. Hayden knew that most Johns were aware of this. They seemed not to care. 
He watched a black girl in bright green spandex slip into the passenger side of a Honda Accord, her lips already moving. The girls had to get to the point quickly. They didn't have time for guys who were shy or didn't have the guts to act. Hayden knew the drill. He'd heard it a hundred times before. Fuck, it's hot out there. It's vice night. You ain't a cop, are you? The John would shake his head, pulling out his cough as proof. Or wary, he would ask the girl if she was a cop. I wouldn't have gotten your car if I was, Jack. Why don't we touch each other at the same time, the John might suggest. This would get them past stalemate. She'd put her hand in his lap and he'd palm her breast as they drove off, which got in mind, honey. Twenty for a hand job, he would say. Nothing less than forty you'd drop me off the next light, or fifty for head, with a condom. Okay, fifty. They would leave Sunset for a quick side street. The residents of Hollywood peered through the bars on their living room windows to see strange cars with bodies bobbing inside. A dome light might illuminate the back of a hooker's head an exposed breast, a pumping hand. Sometimes the flashing red and blue of a cruiser pulled alongside, his spotlight tagging the John stepping out, zipping up, reciting a tale he had practiced but never thought to tell. The girls were always in and out of jail. Hayden knew their stories. My boyfriend brought me out here from Kansas, got busted jacking his house, boss's warehouse in jail now. Put me on the street. I've only done this two times, two months, been in county three times already. Need an extra 20 for the bus. Can you spare? You're not a cop, are you? <laughs> John might want to hear the sob story, depending on how lonely he was or how hard up for a connection. It was the preamble they were addicted to. The hours of cruising. The hint of blonde and a girl walking the street. Her eyes tracking his. The U-turn that brought them within range. Pulling up alongside, rolling down the window. Her quick walk to the passenger door. Lifting the latch, the eye contact, the known smile. Her hand settling into his lap to let him know that yes, he had scored. After that, it got scary. Where did we park? Am I going to get busted? How do I get this fucking core out of my car? It <laughs> <laughs> drove east on Sunset past Milo. The streets were mostly clear of crows until about Western, where the tougher, cheaper girls would be found. There were the street-scarred, knife-wielding drug addicts who would just as easily rob a John as get him off. Hayden didn't, Hayden didn't understand the attraction to these women, but he felt that any guy picking up a girl off the street was looking to be punished for something he'd done, consciously or not. <laughs> and he might as well take his beating sooner than later. <laughs> Hayden made a U-turn at Coenga, continued west toward Highland again. He watched fog hovering low in pools above the ground. He couldn't remember the last time he had seen fog in Hollywood. Instead of descending from above, it seemed to rise from the street, circling manholes like urine-tinted cyclones in reverse. <laughs> he cracked the window and the fog poured in. For a moment, he felt a cold terror that set his hands to shaking. It was a feeling he recognized from some place, some time before. He did not recall it now. He was almost a highland, up ahead, a line of cars, through the fog, a glint of blonde. He passed slowly tapped his brakes. She looked up. She found his eyes and they shared a look. She took a step for his car with her hand outstretched. He stepped on the gas. Through the rear view mirror, he saw her flip him off. Another car was there in a heartbeat and she stepped inside. The car, the corner, the boulevard. He disappeared in a haze as he turned north on highway for the 101. Fun stuff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> dark. Great. Thanks. It's fun reading. It's fun reading when it's all dark. <laughs> you know, yeah. I tell people, I, say, I, don't, I, don't, I don't love writing. I love having written. Yeah. Do you still want to change things? Like, Not so know? much anymore. You know, I, I, um, there's that, that inclination to, to want to do I mean, I, and I change, and I write, and rewrite, and rewrite, and rewrite, obsessively. My favorite part of the writing process really is it takes about a year and a half to get to this point. So I'm really kind of hating it every step of the way until about a year and a half in. And it's when I'm doing my, you know, if I'm, let's say I write a piece six or seven times, it's in that sixth or seventh time when I'm just going over and reinventing the paragraph and the, and the word and the sentence and 
looking for a new way to say a phrase or, or a word even that's unique and different from what you might originally come up with. That's my favorite part, because the structure's there, the story's there, the dialogue's there, and I'm just looking for that extra little bit of uh, poetry to, to bring into the piece to make it flow better. And, and that, that I love it, but it takes a long time to get to that point. So when I get to that point, and then when I reread it, I can really enjoy it. I just wish it came, came quicker. Um, okay, so this is, uh, this is the second book, Beat. Uh, and it takes the same character, Hayden Glass. Uh, when it, interesting, just kind of, you know, the, the process of getting published, everyone's process is, is different. When I wrote Boulevard, it's got a real shocking, dark, uh, Shakespearean kind of ending, where not a lot of people make it out, you know. And, and I never really intended for this to be a series. It was just, I didn't know the terminology then, it was called a standalone, right? So one, one, it's just a story that exists in itself. And, um, and then my agent uh, sold it. He said, hey, good news. We sold your book. We got your two-book deal. I said, well, I, I just wrote one book, though. He said, yeah, dummy, you got to write another one. You know, write a sequel. Wow. A sequel to, to this book? He said, well, you can write a standalone or you can write a sequel. And I thought, have you read this book? How can it be a sequel? And, 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 and I, I took a step away and I thought, wow, what a challenge. What an interesting idea. To where would this character go after what happens in this book? And, and it, was, it was very exciting and very fun to write the sequel because there, there was a sequel. And there was a, more of a story to tell about this character and his growth. And really, now that I, after I was getting this, the second book, I thought, you know, this is a three book piece. So there, there's, a, there's a beginning, middle, and end, and I'll do, I'm writing the third book now. But this is, this is a bit from the second book. This is Hayden Glass, um, uh, after the first book, he, he starts to uh, get obsessed with the internet and internet pornography, thinking that that's a safe place to put his addiction.